Welcome to the OBS Plugin Hall of Fame. If you're a beginner and this is your first time experimenting with OBS plugins, well then you came to the right place because I literally don't ever do anything else with my life. Anytime I install OBS, these are my 10 go-to plugins that I immediately install. And we've covered most of these on the channel before, but I think now would be a good time to step back and reflect on where we're at in 2024, because there's a lot of plugins that I've recommended in the past that I don't recommend anymore. And even if you've heard of every plugin on this list, at least you can feel validated and be like, oh yeah, hell yeah, dude, I got like all of that stuff. I specifically picked the plugins that pretty much every streamer can take advantage of. You should be installing every single one of these. But for the people that are new to this channel, what is an OBS plugin? And how do I install one of these bad boys? Essentially, an OBS plugin is a thing you can install to add more features to OBS, whether they're simple quality of life changes or stuff you just straight up couldn't do before. All the plugins that we're gonna talk about today are very easy to install. I've left them linked down below. You just click in the download button, get the installer, follow the instructions, and then reboot OBS afterwards. And all of them, with the exception for, I think, one, support Mac and Linux and I'm assuming if you use Linux, then you know how to install plugins. Otherwise, why the f are you using Linux? And finally, we don't get this question often anymore, but for the one person that's like, oh my God, what about Streamlabs? Um, no, none of these support Streamlabs. So you're, you're gonna have to switch to regular OBS if you want to use any of these. Number 10 is gradient source. Now, OBS already has the ability to create solid color sources but you could only choose one color. Gradient source allows you to create smooth gradients. So you could choose the colors for your gradient, you could adjust the midpoint, you could change the number of colors in your gradient. It's really nice for creating colored accent pieces for your stream. Like if you wanted to create a simple border for your camera, you could do that directly in OBS. Once you get more advanced with OBS, you could do more stuff, like you could add other filters to that gradient source. Maybe you wanna make it like a scrolling kind of wave rainbow effect, like one of those light up keyboards. Or if you're really advanced, you can even make the color react whenever events happen in your stream, like whenever you get a sub. The only reason why I put this at number 10 is because the colors. It's not really that exciting. Number nine is wind capture audio. This is the most simple way to split up your audio in OBS. So if you wanna play music and hear them in your headphones, but not have that go out to your stream, or maybe you wanna adjust your game volume just for your stream without it affecting what you hear in your headphones, this is the simplest way to do it. And if you record YouTube videos, it's also possible to separate each audio source onto different tracks so that you can split them up later when you're editing them in Resolve or fucking Adobe shit, whatever it's called. The one that takes all your money. I would have this one higher on the list, but one, it only supports Windows, and two, the feature is already built into OBS. However, the one that's built into OBS is an older version of the plugin that only allows you to set one program per audio source. The newer version allows you to tie multiple programs to a single audio source. So say you play like five different games, you can just have all your games on one audio source instead of five different sources. You know what else has Win in it? Win, Doze, uh, Eleven which is like really expensive. You can like save money with today's spot. This is like the worst segue in all of human history. Uh, VIP SCD keys. If you guys have been looking to save money on a Windows 11 license, you can get a Windows 11 Pro key for as little as $21. Just make sure to use the code NUTTY at checkout to get 30% off to get it for that price. And if you wanna save even a little bit more money, you could just get a Windows 10 key and then all those keys can just be upgraded to Windows 11 for free. And those keys cost $15. Just make sure to use a secure payment method at checkout like PayPal, they'll send you an activation code you go into your Windows settings, slap the code in, and then you're done. I've been using VIP SCD keys for a few years now, and all their keys have been super poggers. So check them out, link down below. And uh, yeah, thanks for sponsoring this video. Number eight, OBS shader filter. This one allows you to add really cool effects to your camera, or any source for that matter. There's effects like this fisheye effect, 
some distortion effects, this shaking camera filter, lots of really cool filters, and most of them have their own settings you can adjust so you can fine tune them to make them look the way that you want. OBS shader filter works best when you combine shaders together. So for example, if you wanted to create an old CRT TV aesthetic, you can add a CRT curvature shader, and then add a scan line shader. Then on top of that, you can add some color correction to make it look kind of blue. I use this effect for my heads up display and I even made it face tracking using something else that we're gonna talk about later. There's also a shader that lets you infinitely rotate a source. There's one that makes your camera go wavy like in Yoshi's Island where Yoshi like eats the drugs and then he's like all high and stuff. I use OBS shader a lot and I would have had it higher, but some of the shaders are pretty buggy and some even crash OBS. It's pretty hit and miss, but you can create some really unique aesthetics with the right combination of shaders. Number seven is the Advanced Masks plugin. This is a fairly new one, but it's one of those plugins that immediately made me think, why did this not exist? like five years ago. If you've ever wanted to cut your camera into simple shapes like circles, stars, like the really long circles, or maybe you just wanted to add simple rounded corners to your camera, this plugin lets you do that all within OBS. You could just use the built-in image mask feature and create your own PNG, import that into OBS to make whatever shape you want, but this is a lot simpler and you could adjust it right within OBS. So you could adjust the corner radius of your camera and actually see the adjustments in real time rather than having to recreate a PNG over and over again. You could also use one source as a mask for another source. So for example, if you're using a green screen camera, you can cut your body into the Egyptian pyramids. And it works really well with the next plugin, Stroke Glow Shadow. This might be one of the worst names for a plugin ever, but it is self-explanatory. It allows you to add outlines, glows, and drop shadows to any source in OBS. So let's say you've used the advanced mask plugin to cut your camera into the shape of a circle. Then you could use this plugin to add an outline or a drop shadow or both. It's very adjustable too. You could adjust the thickness of the border. You can add an offset. You can change the strength of your drop shadows. And like the advanced mask plugin, Plugin, you can use other sources as the outline. So instead of using a boring solid color for the outline, you could combine it with the gradient source plugin that we talked about earlier, and you could have like this two tone color border instead. Number five is Composite Blur. You know what, fuck it, I'm gonna keep that in this video. This one adds a really simple blur filter into OBS. You can use this one to blur out your screen or a portion of your screen. So maybe you're playing a game like Jackbox that has like a room code and you wanna hide just the room code. Or maybe you just want to censor out private information in your stream. There's different types of blur effects as well. I use the pixelate option for this RTX off channel point reward where my whole screen uh, turns into one of those Japanese films that I definitely don't watch. Um, um, uh, anime. There's also feathering options if you want to soften the edges. Pretty much everything you need for a proper blurring. And it's also very lightweight as long as you use the dual Kawase option. Now, if you've ever wanted to tilt your camera in 3D space, 3D Effect is the plugin you'll need. It's got pan, tilt, and zoom control, roll, pitch, and yaw adjustment. I personally use this in my just chatting scenes in between games, which I never play, but just pr pretend that I play games. I made this smaller version of the gameplay, added some rounded corners, then I added a nice 3D tilt to it. I also added some rounded corners. I just said that. Um, and some drop shadows using the Stroke Glow Shadow plugin. And I think this looks really clean and minimal for an intermission scene. Just don't copy my idea, okay? Come up with your own shit. Number three is called Downstream Keyer. Now, I just made a video on this like a few hours ago. So you probably saw that video last week. That's why I'm wearing the same thing. If you've ever wanted to have global sources that show on all of your scenes, this is the plugin to do it. Like, let's say you have a video file and you want that video to be displayed no matter if you're on your just chatting scene, gameplay scene, BRB scene. 
This is what you'd use downstream here for. You can also use it to apply global filters that affect the entire screen. So let's say you're using that wave filter from earlier. You can make that affect the entire screen, even through scene changes, not just your camera, not just your gameplay, the whole thing. It's really cool. Number two, is that you guys watching anymore? It's like, I, I don't know. You leave a comment or something and tell me like, yeah, dude, I'm like still here, man. I'm still wide awake. Or like, wake up, okay? I'm still talking. Number two is source clone. Have you ever run into the problem where you want your camera to look normal on your just chatting scene, but then on your gameplay, you want it to look circular, but then you can't do that because when you apply filters to one, it just affects it everywhere. Well, this is what you use Source Clone for. Source Clone allows you to make an exact copy of your camera so that you can apply filters to that clone without affecting your original camera or whatever source you're using. So in that previous example of the intermission scene that had the 3D gameplay, what I did was I added a Source Clone of my gameplay and I applied all the filters to that clone that way, when I go back to my gameplay scene, my gameplay scene isn't in 3D. Out of all the plugins in this list, this is probably the one plugin that I think has to be built into OBS at some point. I cannot believe that OBS doesn't have this built in. And finally, the greatest OBS plugin of all time, the, the, the Go, Go Potes, the king of OBS plugins. You know what it is? it's move transition. If you've ever watched anyone that has these animated transitions where their camera starts large and then it shrinks small on their gameplay scene, or they're doing these crazy animations, they are most likely using move transition. But I don't think people realize just how many features move transition has by this point. Because not only can you slide sources around the screen, you could animate other filters like that 3D filter. You can make sources react to the sound of your voice. You can do typing text animations. You can even have sources that track onto your face and move as your face moves around. Or if you've got one of those fancy face tracking cameras, you can control the physical gimbal using simple filters in OBS. There is so much you could do with the Move plugin. Most people just use it for transitions and then call it a day, but it does so much more than that. I could literally make like 10 videos on Move Transition. But there it is. I have crowned the greatest OBS plugin of all time, the, the GoPote. Guys, let me know what your, your gobs pote is down below. And if you're new to this channel, then leave a comment down below being like, <laughs> wow, you're awfully passionate about this broadcasting software. Um, guys, check me out on Patreon. I've been releasing some exclusive widgets for streamers. They're $10 a month. We just released the uh, Game Boy camera widget that you guys can add to your stream. It's $10 a month, but you can only just pay, just pay for one month. You don't have to pay for every month. And if you want to ask me any questions about streaming, come check me out on Twitch or join the Discord server and you can ask for help there. Get some feedback for your stream. Show, show us all, show the, and uh, see ya.